Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5.30. The snow hit some areas pretty hard overnight, especially Minnesota's eastern counties. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Let's take a look at some of those snow totals. Park Rapids received 12 to 15 inches of snow, and in both Wadena County and eastern Becker County, 13 inches, and the snow and blustery conditions are hanging on in some parts of the area, making travel very difficult for the weekend. Let's find out the latest from Robert, where the snow is still flying. Robert? Snow is still flying in uh, some of our eastern counties, but winding down quickly. I wanted to show you a couple of pictures of uh, some of the snow that has fallen in the uh, Battle Lake area, almost a foot of snow. Thanks to Derek for sending that picture in. And check out this. Heavy, wet snow bringing down some of those branches, sagging down towards the uh, roadway there in the Lake Lizzie area. Thanks to Amy for sending that in. A map of shows you where the snow fell. And we were talking about this storm beginning last week. And as it began to uh, take shape and uh, aim at the uh, Southern Valley, and that's exactly where it happens. Yesterday, we were talking about the possibility of some areas getting over a foot of snow. Well, that happened in some of our eastern counties. Also, some 71 mile per hour wind gusts down in northeastern South Dakota. Temperature wise, pretty uniform, upper 20s and low 30s. So, where you've seen the slush around the uh, standing water around, that's going to freeze as we head through the overnight hours and still some very slick conditions. And in addition to that, a lot of wind out there, especially as you get over to our Minnesota counties, down in our South Dakota counties. That wind blowing that snow around, continuing the uh, lowered visibilities and these slick conditions. But we do have improving weather as we head through the weekend, and we'll detail that here in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Robert. Mm -hmm. Well, in our Northern Valley, our storm missed Grand Forks completely. In fact, you need to head east all the way over to Bemidji to find any substantial snowfall. But as Valley News Team's Neil Carlson shows us, winter has arrived in Bemidji. Winter is still officially more than a month away, but it's arrived here in Bemidji, Minnesota. Bemidji started the day under a storm warning. They're expecting three to seven inches of snow here throughout the day. Schools to the east and south of here at Walker, Akeley, and Hackensack didn't even start the day. They remain closed. In town, police were kept busy responding to a number of fender benders, as some drivers still need to slow down and remember their winter driving skills. But for most folks who live here, this first shot of snow is just an expected welcome change of seasons. Underwhelming. <laughs> this, is, this is not the 9 to 12 inches we were promised. Oh, you want more? Yeah, it's almost Christmas time. More snow. I was hoping to go fishing a little bit more, but uh, maybe we'll have to sit in a deer stand and check that out. And uh, right. I don't know, so shovel the neighbors. I heard home. you whistling away here, cleaning the <laughs> snow off your truck. Apparently, the snow doesn't bother you. No, uh, first one's a little greasy. You got to be a little bit careful, but I'm kind of pumped for it. However, our first blast of snow and ice can quickly turn deadly at high speeds out on the highway. Luckily, the driver of this vehicle was able to walk away uninjured. But now is the time to slow down in many areas across our region and remember our winter driving skills. From Bemidji, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. This afternoon, as the snow continued to fall, all Bemidji schools closed two hours early. The winter storm that rolled through the valley hit Lakes Country pretty hard. Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop was live throughout the valley today with the current road conditions, and she ran into numerous drivers who had to pull off the road. The, the weather is so bad I can't hardly see. I can see probably 30 feet in front of me, and it's, uh, it's just too rough to drive in. Gray said he was on the road for about 15 minutes, then he realized it was dangerous. I thought I'd be able to make it. Uh, a lot better than this. This is this is pretty bad. Other people waited until daylight before braving the roads. So far, so good. Just hoping to get home. <laughs> Ripple says the snow is exciting, but the temperature is a shock because of the recent weather. Yeah, a little bit spoiled, and I'm not dressed appropriately yet. So, <laughs> in Rothsay, the truck stop was packed. Many drivers waiting for the visibility to clear up before hitting the road. Yeah, I believe it. I mean, it is late November. We should be expecting this. Although crews were out plowing, the Minnesota State Patrol say they had a busy morning as well with numerous cars in the ditch. In Lakes Country, Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. 
All right, thanks, Ashley. Areas of Interstate 94 near Barnesville and Ashby, they also saw some numerous crashes, including this one right here. You can see two semis jackknifed a car and slid into the ditch. Sergeant Jesse Grabo said the poor visibility, snow and ice made the roads very dangerous. The storm is also a good reminder to get your vehicle prepared for the rest of winter. Now is the perfect time to put a blanket, flashlight, water and a radio in your car in case something happens. The American Red Cross also says it's important to try and have a full tank of gas during the winter. And if you ever do get in an accident, do not get out of your car because there may be others who slip on the same icy spot. First thing you should do is not get out of your vehicle and check the damage. Remain in your vehicle um, until everything is safe around you. At that point in time, we'd really encourage you then to get off of the road and make sure that everything is safe. But definitely do not, like we do in the summer months, get out and immediately start checking the damage. For a full list of everything you should put in your winter survival kit, head over to valleynewslive.com and click on this story. Minneapolis police are investigating the alleged hanging of a child at a daycare on the city's south side. Police say the situation started around 9.45 this morning when they responded to reports that a daycare provided provider hanged a 16-month-old boy inside this home. A parent dropping off their own child at the daycare was able to rescue the toddler and then take him from the home to safety. The toddler is expected to be okay, but police say the suspect then left the home in her vehicle hitting a pedestrian, a bicyclist, and multiple vehicles. Right now, there is no word on the condition of the people she hit. Tune in tonight on Valley News Live at 9 for more on this story. Danny Heinrich says he plans to publicly say he's sorry to the Wetterlings for the murder and sexually assault of their son, Jacob, Jacob Wetterling. Heinrich kidnapped Wetterling at gunpoint as he and his brother and best friend were biking home from a convenience store in St. Joseph, Minnesota, on October 22, 1989. As part of a plea deal on federal child porn charges, Heinrich led investigators to Jacob's remains in Painesville in late August of this year. According to the court document, the attorney said Heinrich hopes to convey how sorry he feels for the terrible crimes he has committed. It's time to take a look at this week's Valley's Most Wanted. Police say Joshua Kisser is wanted for a felony charge of making terroristic threats. You can call your local law enforcement if you have any information on Kisser. A bill aiming to strengthen security along the northern U.S. border passed unanimously in the Senate this week. And the Northern Border Security Review Act, sponsored by Senator Heidi Heitkamp, requires Homeland Security to examine the northern border, evaluating security threats, among other issues. The northern border has 120 crossings, and the Grand Forks sector, covering North Dakota and Minnesota, is responsible for 861 miles of border. This bill's passage comes after Valley News Live did our very own investigation of the border, including issues surrounding our national security and how those on the front lines feel about those issues. This weekend marks the start of some of the busiest travel times of the year. And one less headache travels, travelers will have to worry about the carry-on screening equipment at Hector International. The TSA reports everything is back to normal and people should be able to get back to their normal flying routine. Travelers we talked with said they had not experienced any issues anyway. It could be an issue in like the bigger airports um, where you know you need to get to your flight on time and someone who carries like extra gear like me sometimes that's a huge concern. Hector International handled almost 900,000 flyers last year Travel experts estimating a million more people taking to the skies this holiday season. The Moorhead Police Department welcomed a new officer to their ranks today, and they say it couldn't have come at a better time. 23-year-old Joseph Secord took the oath today before his family and colleagues. The department says Secord's oath is so important because they are authorized to have 58 sworn-in police officers, but right now they only have 38 officers serving the community for various reasons. It's an honor to be here, and I'm, you know, I'm really thankful for my family and everybody that showed up, and uh, you know, I'm excited to meet everybody in the community and, and get to work. If Officer Secord passes the program, he will be patrolling the streets in about four to six months. The wintry weather is altering the plans of the NDSU football team. The Bison bailed out of Fargo yesterday to get down to South Dakota ahead of the storm. They made it to Sioux Falls last night, then traveled to Vermilion today. If you can't make it to Vermilion to watch the bison in person this weekend, 
Well, we've got you covered. Our coverage begins tomorrow with the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football Pregame Show at 1 p.m. And then to keep it on the KVLY Bison Network for the 2 p.m. kickoff. And of course, remember to like Valley News Live on Facebook so you can follow the latest news, weather, and breaking news updates anytime on your feed. Just search Valley News Live, like our page, and you'll stay informed throughout the entire day. Yeah, well, if you haven't subscribed to Amazon Prime yet, you might want to sign up today. A deal you can get is still ahead tonight. Our first big snowstorm of the year slowly winding down and moving off towards the east, and conditions will very slowly improve in the areas that saw the heaviest snow. Your forecast details, including a look at some improving weather, coming up right after this.